but I think it's creating conditions which will arrive, which will result in some sort of catastrophic failure. Um, because you know, if you build tension in a system without release, ultimately it breaks catastrophically. So I think you've got fewer people in the work. The people who are in work are having to work you know, longer hours in more stressed environments. Um, I don't think long term it's sustainable. And at the same time, you've got related social phenomena like the we're back in Britain, for example, to Victorian levels in differential in pay. So we thought we were moving away from that, but you're now back to a situation where the super rich are so super rich is unbelievable and everybody else is poor. Um, and that's going that's increasingly, if you look at it in, in France, in Britain, not yet in the States, creating a level of social tension, which is going to kick back in technology, um, as it always has, favors the revolutionary. You know, it's no coincidence if you look at the Warsaw Uprising Museum, you see printing presses. You know, it's the ability to communicate fast that makes a revolution, and social confusion is going to help that. So I think it's going to come. The form it takes is going to be interesting, and how governments respond is going to be interesting. You already see some stupidities with the attempt to take, you know, hackers and deport them to the states and have them prosecuted. Um, yeah, and, and that's just getting like crazy, all right? But I think governments are going to struggle. Um, they haven't thought about it yet. And they tend to think in the short term in electability rather than long term. And we haven't really got a legal infrastructure to handle capabilities of technology now or to handle issues of responsibility and identity on which most legal systems depend.